Hello and welcome to this Rich 2019 webinar on last-minute advice for registrants. My name is Alexis Quintana Sainz and I work in the Directorate of Registration in ECA. We are less than three months away from the third Rich registration deadline. For that reason, we have prepared for you an interesting and useful agenda full of tips and help to register your substance. Let's take a look. Istvan Mack will give you some useful tips on what you need to have in mind before submitting your dossier. Then Christina Latinen will guide you through the data requirements you need before creating your dossier. Anita Etolen will continue with some practical advice that will help you to get the correct invoice. Eva Mack will then talk about how you can protect your confidential data in your dossier. I will come back then to wrap up uh, this webinar and give you some take home messages. Throughout the webinar, you can send your questions about the presentations. And if you have some technical issues, you also can uh, send your message to us. We will try to fix all these errors along the way. You can submit your questions at any time. We will answer as many as possible. You should avoid confidential information when asking something. And the questions not answered by the end of the webinar, we, you can then send them to your uh, national help desk or you can send it to us in ECA, europa.eu contact. The webinar is being recorded and it will be published later on in the YouTube channel, in our YouTube channel, and also it will be available in the webinar section of ECA website. So now we can start with the first presentation. Good morning, everyone. My name is Istvan Mack, and I'm also working at the unit for dossier submission and pick. I'm here to talk to you uh, about a few things that you need to consider before you submit your dossier. Let's take a look at our agenda for today. First, I would like to guide you through a few things that uh, are important regarding your joint submission obligations. Then we'll take a look at the uh, various IT tools that we offer for you. In case if you end up in an exceptional situation, ECHO can provide you support and we'll talk about these also. And the last uh, point for me for today will be about a few administrative checks that can make your dossier submission easier. Okay, let's get started with the joint submission obligations. First, let's take a look at a few things that the lead registrant needs to consider. Make sure that you have the support of the CIF. You should not uh, act unilaterally and you should always create the joint submission only if you have everyone's support or the majority of the support within the CIF. Sorry. We would recommend you to create your joint submission well in advance. Please do not wait until you are ready to submit your dossier. With this, uh, you will facilitate that potential co-registrants can find you easier within Reach IT. And we would also recommend you to allow publication of your company name on, our, on the list of joint submissions that is available on our website. By doing all this, you can make sure that members can start signing up to your joint submission. Continuing with lead registrant uh, obligations, if uh, you have, crea if you have uh, the support of the CIF, but when you wanted to create the joint submission and notice that another company who is unsupported by the rest of the CIF has created the joint submission already, or may have even submitted the lead dossier, we would recommend you to contact us and ask for the lead draw verification process. Within a few slides, I will explain you this process later in details. In case if you have pre-registered a substance back in 2008, but since then uh, you have realized that there are better numerical identifiers to describe your substance, i.e. the substance should be registered with a different EC or CAS number than what you use for your pre-registration, then please do not create the joint submission using that pre-registration. Make sure to manually create the joint submission by entering the relevant substance identifiers. However, it is advisable that you include your pre-registration number in your Euclid dossier. 
A few things that are important for member registrants. Make sure to find your joint submission well in advance. Don't leave it as the last minute thing. Uh, there are a number of ways you can do that. In case if you have pre-registered or you might have even registered your substance or have submitted an inquiry dossier notification to ECHA, then you can use the search joint submission functionality within Reach IT. On our website, you can find the list of uh, joint submissions from where you can access the name of the company who is the lead registrant for the joint submission. However, this is only available in case the lead, lead registrant has agreed on the name of the company publication. Uh, furthermore, on our dissemination pages, when searching for the substance, you can see if and who have uh, already registered the substance. Uh, the company names are all, all available there, unless the name of the company has been claimed confidential during the submission. A few submission, uh, joint submission issues that you all might want to consider, that in case there is an unresponsive lead, so there is a lead registrant already, you try to get in touch with them, but they do not reply to any of your contact attempts, email, telephone, whatever, uh, then please do contact us as soon as you can. If the lead doesn't respond or exist, uh, then the CIF will have to elect a new lead registrant. In case the lead registrant is not supported, again, do contact us and we can offer you the lead role verification process as a uh, support. In case if you ha end up with certain technical issues with your joint submission, let it be the status of the jointly submitted documents as in the chemical safety report or guidance on safe use, the joint submission type, tonnage band or something similar, then please do contact us. We can also provide you support with those cases. And now moving on to the lead role verification process. I have already mentioned this a couple of times and now let's get into some details. What is this and how can you make use of it? In case the lead registrant is acting unilaterally, so they don't have the support of the CIF or uh, something similar, then you can contact us describing your situation and request for the lead role verification. Following the uh, receipt of that request, we will send a letter to all who have pre-registered or registered the substance already, and we will request them to provide us information whether the current lead registrant is supported or not, and we will ask them to clearly indicate the supported lead registrant. Following the receipt of all these responses, uh, we will implement the request of the majority. So ECHA does not make a decision here, we will simply implement the uh, wishes of the CIF. Moving on to the next topic for today, uh, I would like to guide you through the various IT tools we have for you that you can use for creating and submitting your dossier. For every circumstances you might find yourself in, we have the right set of IT tools. In case you are a large company uh, with at least one lead submission or you have already a lot of experience using Euclid and Reach IT, then we would suggest you to keep on doing just that and uh, it will provide you a great set of tools that you can use under almost any circumstances. If you're an SME uh, who have uh, limited experience with Euclid or just want to make sure that it works as smoothly as possible, then you might want to consider using our newly introduced Echo Cloud services. I will talk to you about Echo Cloud services in the next slide in a bit more details. However, in case if you're only submitting member dossiers, so no lead dossiers, and you fully agree with everything that has been submitted within the lead dossier, and you only have one composition in your registration dossier, then you're probably your easiest way to submit your registration dossier is through Reach IT using the online dossier submission. Here I would like to introduce you to some of the benefits of using the Echo Cloud services. As you know, Euclid, like any other IT tool and IT application, is constantly evolving and we are bringing you new features, new versions and uh, upgrades. Uh, if you use the Euclid Cloud Services, then you can, make sh you, can, you can be sure that you're always using the latest version of the application, you're never left behind. 
Uh, by using the Euclid Cloud Services, uh, you can make sure that you reduce your risk of data loss. All this data that is submitted via Euclid, uh, the Echo Cloud Services are backed up and the backups are managed by us. The Echo Cloud Services can be accessed from anywhere, so you are not bound to one computer or a certain computer environment to access your data. And with this, you can easier provide access to any consultant who might be working on behalf of you. We can also provide you better online support as we have access to what you're doing. And uh, no installation or hardware costs are imminent for you as we'll take care of all that for you. And as a last point, I would like to mention that by using the Echo Cloud services, your data is more secure because you're minimizing the number of uh, local copies that are available. There are a number of supporting tools that we would like to remind you about, and they mostly are linked to Euclid 6. You can use the validation assistant that will simulate the automated checks done by ECHA for the business rules and the technical completeness checks. You can use the fee calculator to know the fees that you will have to pay for your registration. And uh, you can use the dissemination preview to know which parts of the dossier will be disseminated on our website. These are all free to use and they are included with the latest version of Euclid 6. By using them, you can get advanced information on your dossier. In case you end up in exceptional situations, then there are a number of solutions that the Director's Contact Group, or also known as DCG, can support you with. What is the Director's Contact Group? It's an informal group that has been set up in 2010, January, for the, registration, for the first registration deadline. It includes directors from ECHA, uh, members of the European Commission, and uh, nine industry associations. Amongst other things, they are working on practical solutions for companies in exceptional situations that would block them from being able to register on time. What are these exceptional situations where you can apply for a DCG solution? Let's take a look at them. First is mixture importer does not obtain substance information uh, from the non-EU supplier. Then delays in obtaining NX7 or NX8 test results in case if you have ordered them on time, but the lab informs you that they will not be ready for you to be able to submit your registration dossier by the deadline. In case there's a legal entity change where a company who have, for example, pre-registered a substance back in 2008, but there has been a split and now one of the legal entities is without a pre-registration uh, then there are different solutions for uh, lead registrants disappearing with no complete submission, let it be uh, before or after submission. And last, uh, in case there is a, a CIF where the current supplier decides not to register the substance and therefore the downstream user uh, remains without any manufacturer or importer and they will have to decide to start importing. How to apply for a solution under these DCG cases? First and foremost, you have to contact us before you submit your dossier. You should not contact your do uh, you should not submit your dossier without having a permission from us to do so in case you want to apply for the DCG solutions. You should start on the DCG web pages where you can find the notice on the use of the DCG solutions. That document will include that document includes all the details you need to know for a proper application. We will give you further instructions once you have uh, contacted us. Please note that there are two important deadlines for you in case if you want to apply for DCG solutions. The first is that in case uh, you want to use the solution for your tests are not ready uh, case, then you have had to order your test at latest by the 31st of March 2018. And also if you want to use any of the DCG solutions, you have to contact ECHA before the 24th of May 2018. As the last topic for today, for me, uh, I would like to guide you through a few administrative checks. 
you have to make sure that all your details are up to date within our systems. This is the only way we can provide you support as you're getting closer to the deadline. There is likely a case where we will like to offer you proactive support. Make sure that your contact details are up to date. This includes both your general contact details and contact details of the persons assigned to uh, various joint submissions and uh, registrations. Also, before submitting your dossier, verify your company size. The company size has to be based on the EU criteria, not on the national legislation you might fall under. And you will have to upload supporting documents into Reach IT before submitting your dossier when declaring your company size. SME verification is carried out on all companies who have declared themselves anything else than large. This is in order so that we have a level playing field as SME companies are benefiting from reduced regi registration fees. And as a last thing from me, a few take home messages. Make sure that you sort out all your joint submission related issues early on. If needed, we can provide you support, but you have to contact us for that. Choose the correct set of IT tools. It can greatly help you in preparing your dossier and submitting your registration to ECHA. And in case if you end up under an exceptional circumstances, then do contact us and we can provide you help also. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention for today from my side. Hello, good morning. My name is Kristina Leitinen and I'm here to talk about the essential information that you need for a successful registration. So, in my presentation I will cover four different topics. First are the data requirements that concern all the registrants. After that I will be giving a few practical tips about preparing your registration dossier. After that there are a few things about when you submit your registration and how to follow your pro registration progress in Reach IT. So, for the data requirements. In this section, I will only cover two different data requirements that concern all the registrants. These are the substance identity and description of uses. If you are a lead or you as a member decide to opt out for some or all the data provided by your lead, there are more information requirements for you depending on your tonnage band. More, more on these data requirements will be covered in a webinar focused on technical complete, completeness check on 15th of March. Please remember that all the data you provide needs to be as specific as possible and describe the substance as, is it, as it is manufactured. So, the first requirement is of course the substance identity. This is the most crucial part of your registration dossier. You need to have identified your substance correctly already well before submitting your registration. That is, is because you have to find the correct joint submission and the whole registrant as is one mentioned. First, you need to have the correct chemical identifiers. This means that you have the UPAC name for your sub substance. If no official UPAC name exists, use the chemical name. Also include numerical identifiers if they are available. You will also need to have the structural formula, molecular formula and the molecular weight for a substance. The second thing is the composition. You have to know how many main constituents, impurities and additives your substance has. You will also have to report the purity of the substance as well as the typical concentration and concentration range. If your substance has different compositions when manufactured, then add as many different compositions as you need. If your substance is an UVCB, you will also need to have a description of manual manufacturing process. Thirdly, is the spectral and analytical data. It is needed to verify the identity and composition of the substance. This means that you need to provide identification and quantification data. Substance naming, especially for UVCB substances and multi-constituent substances, can be challenging sometimes. Please check the guidance of substance identification in our website to help you further. For especially these cases, I would like to have, uh, give you a practical tip how to export the easy number 
from various sources in REACH IT. First, if you are a member of a joint submission and your lead has already submitted, you can export the EC number for your substance in the joint submission page. Here you can see the button to export in the upper right corner. Also, if you have pre-registered your substance as a member in pre -Sieve, you can find the EC number from the pre -Sieve page in Reach IT. If you have successfully inquired about your substance, you will find the avail available EC number in submission report in in your REACH IT. The second data requirement that concerns everyone is the substance uses. The description of uses gives information about the conditions of safe use down the supply chain and is also essential for chemical safety assessment if you have to do one. So where to start to look for description of uses for your substance? Well, first thing is to identify your markets. Where and what for is your substance used? As a member, easiest way is to check what your lead has submitted and adapt the information according to your own supply chain. If your substance has been already registered by someone, it is a public information you can find in ECHA websites by searching the registered substance. To help you describe your uses in best possible way, I would also like to encourage you to take use of our use maps in ECHA websites. In use maps, you will find the commonly agreed ways to describe your uses, including activities contributing to the uses. Use maps are provided by many industry sectors and ECHA hosts use maps in use maps library. Use maps are also essential when you have to compile chemical safety assessment. The library has the maps in case our templates. So now that you have gathered all the necessary information to compile your registration dossier, please make sure that you use the validation assistant in Euclid and fix all the flagged issues before submitting. This is also essential that you check that your substance name and identification are in line with your joint submission. This is also information that you can check from the joint submission page. Here you can check, for example, the tonnage band of your joint submission and has your lead agreed to provide guidance of safe use or chemical safety report on behalf of members. Once you submit your registration in REACH IT, you will first go to pre-validation and business rules checks. Business rules are in place to ensure that your registration has the correct administrative information as well as the information to identify your substance. Your submission is considered only submitted after you have passed the business rules check. So for that reason, it is important that you keep on following your registration process and you if you fail business rules, fix all the flagged issues and resubmit. There is no limit to the times that you can resubmit after the business rule failure. So you can follow your submission progress and read the failure message from your submission report in REACH IT. If you continue to fail and face difficulties otherwise to successfully submit, please don't hesitate to contact us. Once you have passed Pre-validation and business rule check, you can see the progress entering technical completeness check and financial completeness check. These are two processes that will start in parallel. Anita will explain more about invoicing in the next presentation. Technical completeness check uh, specific webinar will be held 15th of March and it'll, it will explain more about how we check your sub, that your submission is complete. Please mark it on your agenda. It is also in, after you have submitted important that you comply with the legal deadlines given in the official communication. This official communication you can find in the section key documents in your submission report in REACH IT.
You will also receive notification of any new tasks and messages in your account. That is why it is important to keep your contact details as well as email notification settings up to date. So, a few take home messages from my presentation. First, fulfill the data requirements. Make sure that you have a complete substance identity and you have described your uses in the best possible way. Check that your substance is in line with your joint submission. Make sure that you have passed the business rules check and keep on following your submission and comply with the deadlines. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anita Edolen and I will tell you more details about registration invoicing. Um, I will first tell some basic information then I will help you to find your invoice, how the invoice looks like, and uh, finally I will give you some tools to help you to figure out how you get the uh, correct invoice on the first time round. So uh, REACH registrations have fees to cover the administrative uh, costs. These fees are set by the European Commission uh, together with the member states. Fees and payment practices are laid down in REACH field regulation and subsequent amendments. You can always look for these regulations for more detailed information. Your registration fees depends on few factors. Uh, main, main parts are submission type, tonnage band, if you have chargeable confidentiality claims, and company size. We have lower fees for joint submissions and micro, small and medium sized enterprises. You will find your invoice when your submission has passed the, passed the business rules check. The, if you have an invoice for your submission, we need to get your payment so that your, in, your submission can be completed and you will get the registration number if you have an initial, initial submission. Please note that only electronic invoices are sent via REACH IT. This is to secure the confidentiality of your information. You will find your invoice either through tasks or searching from menu for invoices. If you add more search filters, you can narrow down your findings. In any case, you will find a list of all available invoices to you. From the small arrow on the right, you will be able to see more information on a specific invoice. Here you can see, for example, the full fee, due dates, and you can also download the invoice in PDF form. So this is how ECA invoice looks like. The information to your invoice comes from your Reach IT account and from your submission. Check that you have correct company size and correct billing information, including address and VAT number. We cannot modify any invoice details for you. So if you find out that you need to get a new invoice, please make changes in your Reach IT account first and then ask ECA to raise you the invoice for you. When we look more details, you can see here middle the registration fees. This specific company has decided to register for a standard registration 1 to 10 tons from on -site in, for on-site in intermediates and they have also a, a requested confidentiality on the on a specific tonnage band. These all elements have separate fees and together they form the full fee they have to pay for their registration. The information to make the payment can be found from the right, right lower corner. Uh, below the banking information, you can find your payment reference number. This number is same as your invoice number. Please remember to use it when you do your payments so that we can easily allocate your money to your correct submission. Under the payment reference, you can finally find your due date now. This due date is automatically extended if we haven't get your money in time. You will have a reminder with the extended due date sent to your HIT account. 
Extended due date is 60 days after your initial due date. So finally, you have your invoice, you have made the payment, and you wonder if ECA received your money. It takes approximately four to five days to confirm the payment. And when we receive the payment, your submission moves automatically to the next step. However, if we don't receive your payment in time, your registration will be rejected. It's also good to know that regulation prevents us from reimbursing payments made after the extended due date, but before the registration is rejected. So now I have a few tips for you that help you to figure out if everything is OK and you will get the correct invoice. Fee calculator in Euclid 6 helps you to see the fees before you submit your dossier. You can see when you run it, your submission type, tonnage band, if you have any chargeable confidentiality claims, and your company size. If you have any mismatches, what you were aiming for and what you're getting, it's now time to correct them in your dossier. For SME registrants, we have information available in sections determine company size and declare company size. You can find this information when you log into company details and you go for to update your company size. Uh, here you can find information how you establish your company ownership structure and you, how you assess your company size correctly. Please remember to add the documentary evidence in Reach IT. You can always complement the documents later. However, ECHO will review the supporting documents only when the SME verification process has been initiated. We will have a link to more details on SME assessment at the end of, the docu uh, end, end of this presentation. So, finally, I have a few take-home messages from the invoicing. Check your billing information and your company size before you submit. Use fee calculator in Euclid 6 before you submit your dossier. And check the due date and pay in time. And, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. We are always happy to answer your questions. And here you can find the useful links to the company size assessment and a video tutorial to fee calculator. Thank you. This is enough for me. And now I give floor to Eva. Hi, my name is Eva Mack, and uh, I will give you some last minute advice on uh, how to protect your confidential data. Um, I will tell you what does claiming confidentiality mean, how to do it, and what are the things you should consider. You should know that you have the possibility to claim confidentiality on certain information in accordance with Article 119.2 of REACH. And uh, this means uh, exclusion of the information from publication on our website. Confidentiality claims are subject to fees. Uh, these fees are levied for the assessment of the claim. Therefore, payments are non-refundable. Article 119 of REACH specifies what information will be published, whether it is claimed confidential or not. You should also know that claims are not automatically accepted. They may be rejected, but the good news is that you will always have uh, one chance to clarify. The claim might be rejected if the information is uh, publicly available or the justification is insufficient. Here we have collected a few things for you, what you should consider before claiming confidentiality. First of all, if the information is available in the public domain, it cannot be accepted. Therefore, we advise you to do your own internet search. And uh, for example, if you are considering claiming the substance name confidential, check with your EC cost number in uh, search engines and on our website if the information is already available. Or for use and hazardous impurities, you can check publicly available safety data sheets. Find out if claiming confidentiality is actually useful for you. Check if the claim covers the information you want to protect. 
and know what information is, is, pu if is published if there is no confidentiality claim in your dossier. In the following table, we have collected a few things what you should be aware of. For example, we are publishing uh, aggregated tonnage band of all registrants together. Substances listed in uh, INEX inventory or pre-registered substances are published always by default. Therefore, claims are not possible on those. And uh, if you are in this situation, you might want to consider claiming the application, the use of the substance or your company name instead. If your company name claim is accepted by us, you should keep in mind that it is still going to be available on the core registrants page of Reach IT, unless you have appointed a third party, third party representative. Study summaries claims are covering uh, mostly the experimental details and details on examinations. If you uh, would like to claim the results of the studies that is not possible, those are always published. The chemical safety assessment claims cover the fact whether a chemical safety assessment was performed or not. Um, chemical safety reports are not part of this claim and they are not published on our website. And uh, when you submit a claim, you should always have a reasoned and valid justification. The justification needs to explain us what is the commercial interest of this information and then uh, how could your business be harmed by the publication of the information. The justification needs to be specific to the information claimed confidential and um, this means that a valid justification on the use or the company name is not going to be acceptable on the outcome of the PBT assessment of the substance. For instance, uh, we won't accept justifications which are just short statements. If you have uh, stated that the information is intellectual property or confidential business information, or you don't want your competitors to know about it, or you're worried that uh, the studies uh, will be used by others for registration purposes somewhere else, these are not, not uh, valid justifications. You can find examples of, of acceptable justifications on, uh, in our manual, dissemination and confidentiality under the REACH regulation. By clicking the link, you can go directly to this manual. And then here are the five main steps of claiming confidentiality. First of all, place your confidentiality claim in your Euclid dataset or in your online member dossier in ReachIT before you would create your dossier. Add the justification for each claim, create your dossier and use our plugins. This is very useful because the dissemination uh, preview can uh, show you what information will be published from your dossier so you will know it beforehand. And then the fee calculator will show you how much your claims will cost. When you're done with all this, you can submit your dossier and pay the fees. And then in the end, please check your Reach IT message box to see our decision. And finally, some take home messages. Um, Make sure that the information you are co claiming confidential is not already public. The information you want to pro protect is covered by the claim and your justification is reasoned and valid. Finally, you can find some further information on the confidentiality request on all the claim types and dissemination of the information on our manual, dissemination and confidentiality under the REACH regulation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eva, and thank you to all the presenters and also the people that are answering your questions um, behind the screen. Um, we, have er we have finished earlier than, than what we expected, so that means that you have actually additional time to, to take the, the opportunity and ask questions to, to our panel that is behind. We have around 20 people. Um, answering questions. So let's wrap up uh, with some take-home take messages about what you have been hearing today. 
we know that it's a lot of information. This is going to be available later and the links are going to be clickable. So take the opportunity to use this presentation as a mini guide. So the first stay home message is that you should find the lead registrant of the joint submission for your substance. So now is the time to search for the lead registrant in Reach IT. Put together your data requirements. So as Christina has been informing, so she has given uh, some advice on what is the necessary information you need to have in order to pass business rules and TCC. Keep your company and contact information up to date in Reach IT. This is important for several reasons. The members might need to contact you in case they have some questions. ECA might need to contact you to clarify some things and maybe also to help you to process your dossiers correctly and to receive your, your, um, your invoices. And if, remember that if claiming data confidential, you should make sure that the information is not the, in the public domain, as Eva indicated, and that a justification and the justification is recent and valid. So now it's almost quarter to 12. So you have still 15 minutes, sorry, one, uh, half an hour to submit your questions until it's quarter past uh, 12 Helsinki time and we will answer as many as possible. Um, in case we don't manage to answer your questions by one o'clock, then you can send those questions either to your national help desk or to our own help desk. The recording of the webinar is going to be available in ECA's YouTube channel, but also in the webinar section of our webpage. The links are going to be clickable, so as I said, use this as a 3D uh, guide. Remember that we have the REACH 2018 web pages. They are very easily identified. Um, you can identify them very easily by clicking in the icon that we have in our web page. It says REACH 2018. There is a lot of information, guides and advice on how to successfully submit your a REACH 2018 registration dossier. We have something uh, new. We have since a couple of weeks ago, the tip of the week. So every week we will publish some useful tip that will help you with your in your registration process. And um, this tip will appear in the um, ECA weekly, the weekly emails that we send with news. So you can take the chance to click on the link there and subscribe to your news. We also will publish the um, tip of the week in Twitter. Of course, we cannot put uh, the same amount of information in 120 characters, so it's good to, to subscribe to your news. And also we will have uh, the tip of the week in LinkedIn. So please follow us in those channels. The webinar has ended. Uh, you will receive a feedback form once the webinar closes. So we value your, your feedback and hope that you take the time to share it with us. If you want to hear some other about other topics in the future, also you can send that information um, together with the feedback form. The next REACH 2018 webinar will be on 15th of March. It will be about technical completeness check how to prepare a registration dossier and the most common failures. Why we are telling you about the most common failures so that you don't commit those failures yourself. Uh, you can already register uh, today and we hope that you follow us um, that day. So thank you very much. You still have around half an hour to ask your questions and we will be happy to, to answer them. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.